high schools were doing hand balancing. Functional, real functional body weight. High schools built this stuff. The guy on top is Jack Wallane. Anybody seen him on TV? What's he sell? Sells that juicer, doesn't he? Well, at one time, Jack Wallane in the 60s was on TV. The guy was a fitness machine. And that's him on top. Look at the guy at the bottom, though. He's really carrying the weight. He's in a full bridge, and he's holding up th uh, three people. He eats breakfast. <laughs> that's down on Muscle Beach. Now, this guy, Hans Krauss, comes over in 1938, and he looks around. He says, boy, Americans sure don't move very well. They don't move much, and they don't move well. So he creates, he and uh, Sonia Weber and Ruth Hirschland create this test, which is basically a test of core strength, isn't it? Just a test of this muscular balance between the uh, abdominal wall and the back. Look at the failure rate. About 60% of Americans, only about 9% European. What kind of a war was going on in 54? Hot one or a cold one? Cold war. We thought we might be going to war with Russia again. And what had just ended, not very well, by the way, what war had just ended by 54? Korean. Pretty ugly. We came through World War II, hit the skids, went into Korea unprepared. So by 1953, schools around the country were trying to rebuild this stuff. Back to formations, off the platform, fixing posture when they could, off the ground training. This is California. But what's wrong with that picture? Pretty ugly, huh? Well, that was right out of the California guidelines. So this movement was doomed, wasn't it? And look at those ugly headstands. Real bad stuff. So we were on the we were on the downslide. Now Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, tries to pull this back together, so he hires that guy on the right. His name is Bud Wilkinson. You ever heard of him? O Oklahoma football coach? Trained in the Navy V5 program and was an advocate of fitness. So the women, again, I thought the women did a really good job back in the 60s, but the men did too, the boys. This is all 60s stuff. There we see the ladder again, or the uh, balance beam from the rope. So all this stuff came back when, uh, when I was a boy, a little spurt of this stuff. A little dangerous today. I suppose we, we crashed and burned on some of this stuff, but it was pretty cool stuff. No nets, no mats. Gee, we get sued today for that, huh? What's that contraption called again? What kind of a ladder? A window ladder, right. And so a lot of us who grew up on this stuff went, to the, uh, went into the Army. This is from 1967. Again, there were some kids who grew up. In fact, is that a pretty good looking guy? Thank you. <laughs> but the reality, the reality was we weren't doing very well at this stuff. That was, the, that was really the way it was with fitness back in the 60s. It was pretty quirky, pretty weak. So take a look. 50 to 60% of 18 year olds were unfit for military service in the 1960s. That's ugly, right? Hey, what do you think it is today? Less than three out of 10 who try to get into the military can make it. You should be worried about that because they're going to come after you one of these days because you're better stock. And it's been sliding for several generations. Look at that. So there we were in the 1960s. Hey, that's me too. <laughs> now that's what a gym, that's what a, uh, that's what weightlifting looked like for the most people in the 1980s. Stuck it in the corner of the, bas of the uh, you know, in the gym, dodged basketballs. This is where we were in the 80s with fitness. But you can see the remnants from, this was an old army gym, you can see the remnants of the pulleys and the speed bag. But then the Berlin Wall went down. And the functional fitness movement began in the 1990s. Well, that jump frame, which is now an agility ladder, is from 1906. There's your wobble board again. 
Oh, I was going to get a picture of you guys on the kettlebells. Okay, put that one up there with these two guys on the kettlebells, three guys. There's your medicine balls, Indian clubs. These are boxers, and this is Pat Militich. Who's, who's Pat Militich? You know anybody know? UFC? You ever heard of him? Big fighter guy, yeah. Inversion. Anybody been on inversion boots, inversion tables? All the way back to the yogis, Hippocrates, John Grimmick. And look at that guy with a big beard. What is that? Holy cow, over here. My God. And there's your rangers. Now, here's this muscular Christianity movement. Some will give it to Bush. They'll say George Bush recreated the idea of the muscular Christian. But if you type in muscular Christianity now, you'll see that there's a lot of images, real quirky stuff, like this one's one of my favorites. It's right off the internet. So this relationship between muscles and Christianity. Keep in mind that always under the radar, there are these movements. So here we are. This is what we think we are. And it just gets so nutty when we look at ourselves sometimes as a country about who we think we are. And by golly, the bad guys are out there, aren't they? What language is that? Those are the North Koreans, and they're mad at us. And they got a million and a half soldiers that are really mad. In fact, they're on high alert right now. Well, here we are. <laughs> It's not good news, is it? Now, we're going to go quick. I used to work for the US Army, for the Army Physical Fitness School. So let's go that way, because homeland security is such an important part. Three purposes for physical culture in the world, in the society. Put them in your head. National productivity, right? Divide the labor, make sure everybody has enough. Homeland security, and then cultural evolution. When, you're, when, you, when you get the first two, you've got time. Well, now, you can imagine that the guy in the middle of that formation was pretty darn happy with their training method, wouldn't you say? <laughs> and he didn't want it to change. He was absolutely satisfied. But just like out in the civilian world, if you're not careful, the doctrine can go belly up. It gets obsolete real fast. Well, this is the 1980s, right out of the Army PT manual. This was a warm-up. Look at that poor guy. Look at that poor neck on that fellow. So, and you can tell, look, look at the legs on him. He's a runner or whatever he does. He's got these giant legs and he's all deformed up on top. Well, that was the standard. Ugly push-ups. Oh, my God, the push-ups were ugly. I just took that picture. I just snapped that sucker. And, and they didn't pose for that. <laughs> and they weren't waiting for a bus. You're looking at the US Navy, all right? I took this picture, too. Now, we're supposed to take these fellows and make them strong. That fellow needs physical therapy. Look at that poor guy. You see? That push-up counted. <laughs> that push-up counted. And that fellow was becoming a master fitness trainer for the United States Army. Now, let's say you get up every morning and you do like 50 of these, but you don't miss a morning. <laughs> guess where you'll end up when you're 30. Here we are. Really mindful stuff, huh? So ugly. Now, this was a, a military gymnastics. And I, I was teaching the class, but I went out and took photos. I had very few that could do a forward roll. Their spines are frozen. See his spine? It's frozen. He's not going to do a forward roll on any day. But on a lot of the movements, some of the older folks did even, they were, they were better. Pretty good capacity to squat compared to some of the others out there, you see. And she was the oldest. She was uh, about 45 at the time. She was cute, too. Mm. So, uh, med balls, ladders, off the ground, club swinging. This is all training we did. This unit made the New York Times. We did just did an analysis of, kind of like screening, not as sophisticated as yours, but we said, look, we need to fix these things, and here's how you're going to fix them. The scores were so high. Went out and worked with BUDS, Navy SEALs, to try to clean their stuff up. They, their technical quality, they, they really want to get better. Med balls. 
Well, there's this relationship between fitness and mental capacity too, isn't there? But this is what we're up against. This is ugly. This is so ugly. That's not precise, is it? I took this picture right off a wall. In, uh, in, I work for the Department of Education in Iowa. I'm the PE guy for all the schools in the state. And this is a picture that promotes reading. But you can see the hollowness of the chest. You can see, right? And you see this poor child in this radical C curve. Well, what do you think all that does over time? But across the country, there's a discussion, a growing discussion about what constitutes rational movement. See? What's that look like? And what should it be for the future? And it's happening right now. Now that is horizontal extension with a nine pound med ball. So you can see hip flexors open, shoulder girdle opening. Another variation of flexion extension partner training. Another one. And this is right here, right in your neighborhood. This, this is a summation of all of the wisdom I've just showed you. It's the idea of first figuring out where you are, how well you move, what needs to be fixed, and then adjusting your program to fix those things. And people that travel to see this guy, they pay so much money, and you've already, I mean, you've already invested a lot, right? Is this free, Avery? <laughs> so I would, I would grab, if I were you, I'd grab this guy. Now, <laughs> we're rethinking nutrition across the country. There are changes. Fitness is still a little bit quirky, though. We're still trying to figure out <laughs> fitness is. Bottom line, though, don't, and, and don't walk away tonight thinking that if you put the old and the new together, you've got a great product. It's not that simple. It's more sophisticated. You can put the old and the new together and still come out at a deficit.